gods and their logarithms have gotten you to yet another glorious episode of Whining About Pest Control. If you're just joining us, I am Shell Hartzer of 360 Pest Consulting. And normally I talk about a specific pest and then we whine about how to control it. We're going to switch things up just a bit today and I'm going to whine about a specific control method. This week I'm whining about glue boards. And for this episode I'm drinking Reign of Terror Chanon Blanc because this could be kind of terrifying, so cheers. Mmm, a little bit of tang. It's really nice. There are many different styles, brands, and manufacturers of glue boards. I'm not going to be providing any critique or recommendations on any of those. Having that diversity, though, means that there's a lot of options for different situations, and that's a great thing. I'm also not going to talk about glue boards for light traps or pheromone traps because we did whining episodes on those in the past, and you can go back and review those. A glue board is not a complicated thing. It's some kind of cardboard or paper or plastic backing that holds the glue, aka the sticky stuff. It's for capturing and monitoring pests, mostly insects and rodents. Easy, right? Cool. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Cheers. Alright, more? Okay. For real, it's not the glue board that matters, it's you. Personally, I think glue boards are overused and underutilized. What do I mean by that? Too many glue boards are put out and they're expected to catch and control the pest. And there's not enough data being collected and used to actually manage those pest problems. Here's a good example. I put out a glue board to catch my sister, the pest, from coming in and drinking my wine. So when I catch that pest, I, what? Most people dispose of it, set on a new glue board, right? The problem is, is I haven't addressed why my sister is getting in, what's attracting her, and how do I stop this from happening and prevent it in the future? Even worse, say I have multiple glue boards out and I don't track which one actually caught my sister pest. So now I don't know which entrance or which wine or which route they're taking, so I can't focus on any particular area. Even worse, what if the next time I set out a glue board, she doesn't get stuck to it and she gets all the way to my wine? I've done nothing to actually control that problem and stop it from happening again. To whine more about the control slash monitoring aspect, it's also about placing those glue boards, location. Back to my sister getting in and drinking my wine. I put glue boards on the main floor in the kitchen to capture and monitor my sister problem. Great, right? But my wine is downstairs in the cellar and she's using the basement door to get in. I may go weeks, okay, let's be real, days, before I notice that my wine is being attacked. It's impossible to cover every eventuality of a pest getting in without putting thousands of glue boards in every single room. But there are more probable locations than others depending on that pest. In this case, I know my sister probably doesn't have a ladder and isn't gonna break into my second floor windows or my attic. So if that's the pest I want to look for, I know to put those glue boards by the ground floor and the doors there in order to intercept that pest problem. Or knowing that she's after my wine, I can put glue boards near that attractive source and in nor the boxes of pasta or whatever that's nearby. Now, if the data, the type of pests and their numbers over time is analyzed and used, it makes my job easier as a pest control provider because I don't have to try and cover everything. I can focus in on those areas where that pest is most likely. If I use that data over time, I can see if my control methods, locking my back door, sealing up the wine in a cabinet, are working or not. If the problem continues, I know that I've missed something and I need to do something differently. Then there's the issue of non-targets. A glue board may catch my sister sneaking in, which is the pest problem, but it may also catch my cat, which is not a threat to my wine, and that's bad. We can reduce the number of non-target species that get to those glue boards by placing those glue boards in areas that the pest may get to, but the non-target likely won't. We can also place glue boards in stations, and that's going to prevent larger non-targets from getting in and getting stuck to them. Ultimately, you could have thousands of glue boards out and still not catch your target pest or prevent their damage or fix the problem so they don't get in and continue to drink your wine. Or you could have just a few glue boards in the right places and key areas 
use that data and not only control the problem, but control it faster and prevent it from happening again. In other words, use glue boards as monitors, protect the wine. There's so much more I can whine about glue boards, but there's not enough wine left in that bottle, so you're gonna have to wait till the next episode. Until then, grab a glass, stop sibling infiltrations, and whine to me about your glue board challenges. I can help. Hit all those buttons down below, share with everybody you know, and cheers to glorious glue boards. Mm -hmm.